What an absolutely bizarre way to start off the week. Not only did people wake up to find out that there was an unpiloted F-35 stealth fighter jet on the loose for hours, but while that was happening, there was also a live bear on the loose in Walt Disney World's main theme park, the Magic Kingdom, shutting down large parts of that park out of a clear abundance of caution. Now, these two stories came on the heels of a weekend of updates to stories like Lauren Boebert's uh, eccentric escapades during the Beetlejuice musical, a United Auto Workers strike that is uh, just getting started, a literal... Uh, it's a book burning, but they said that the boxes were empty. We'll get to it. Okay. And then Musk threatening to charge every Twitter user for access to the platform. Also, a bunch of talk shows finally admitted that uh, crossing the picket line was a bad idea, but only after the hosts had done irreparable harm to their careers. Yeah, that was cool to see. Yeah. Anyway, obviously, we're going to start with the missing military aircraft because simply, uh, what the fuck? And despite being arguably the biggest news story in the country to start off this week, it almost feels as though it was underreported at first because it's just incredibly embarrassing for the military to lose a very expensive plane yeah. over U.S. airspace. And yeah, it also was probably at least a little unsettling to everyone that at some point on Monday an F-35 fighter jet could have just crash landed directly into your home or any major metropolitan area within... Let's see here. Well, anywhere, I guess, because it was an incredibly fast jet that was quite literally flying itself until the fuel ran out. Yeah, um, could have gone anywhere. I've seen enough uh, air show disasters to know that not a fun experience. It's a big boom that it makes. Yeah, it was uh, uh, so many, so much of the reporting. Uh, having fun with it like well, i guess the stealth's just a little too good excuse me there's an unpiloted jet yeah. aircraft flying around it, uh, aimlessly in the country right now it's just an incendiary bomb that could just go anywhere yeah it's and it's and it's somewhere up there and uh, we need your help finding it yeah. america you <laughs> i'm doing my part so yeah uh, if you think this story sounds stupid so far you are in for a treat because it gets even dumber than that yeah according to multiple sources the person piloting the aircraft allegedly engaged the autopilot before completely ejecting from the plane, leaving it to just fly wherever and with no way for anyone to properly locate it because, oh yeah, the stealth technology that's built into it, intentionally making it untrackable. I saw elected officials talking about how, well, why don't, why don't we have tracking devices on these planes? Do you understand why and how stealth technology works? The whole point is that you can't find it. You don't know where can't it is. Can't we just put an air tag on one of these yeah, things? Yeah, an Apple air tag would fix this real quick. Uh, but yeah, th this led to a very odd request from the U.S. military on Monday. Please help us find our missing $100 million stealth fighter jet because we simply cannot find it because we made it impossible to do so. This is the one thing we didn't want to happen. <laughs> Technically working as intended. But by the time we started filming this episode, there was an update to the story, and we'll get to it, but let's see how this all originally played out. Here's NBC News. A U.S. fighter jet's stealth abilities appear to be working too well, <laughs> with authorities forced to ask the public for help finding an F-35 that went missing somewhere over South Carolina when the pilot ejected because of a, quote, mishap. Oopsie. Joint Base Charleston, an air base in North Charleston, said it was working with Marine Corps Air Station Beaufort to locate an F-35 that was involved in a mishap Sunday afternoon. The language they use throughout all of these stories is very, like, uh, like kids' gloves. Yeah. Like, don't worry, uh, nothing major, just an F-35 aircraft. At 0500 uh, hours, uh, <laughs> one of our pilots had what was uh, what, what was, we're calling internally... A bit of a goof. Yeah, a bit of an oopsie. <laughs> uh, also, that plane's still up there flying around, presumably with lots of fuel in it. And uh, this almost seemed like conspiracy brain. Yeah. They did this uh, on purpose to uh, sell the capabilities of this very troubled jet, which, <laughs> as you'll recall, you know, widely seen as a big waste of money, can't really do the things that it's supposed to do all that well. I, I believe at one point there was a lot of talk about how it's it can't really do stealth the way that they said it did. So you sacrifice one of them, you're like, oh my gosh, Where'd wow. Where'd it go? This could be, this is such a, oh God. The we stealth, can't even find it. The stealth's just too good. Yeah, also by the time it uh, eventually was released, you, 
the pilotless program is already off and running, so not really a need for pilot. AI fixes this. <laughs> uh, the reporting continues, the pilot was able to safely eject from the aircraft, an F-35B Lightning II jet, and was taken to a local medical center in stable condition. Why did he eject, though? Uh, Seems like, like the sure plane we'll, was fine. We'll find out at some point, but... Uh, Maybe the, the stealth was so good, guys. The guys, the stealth was so good that he was like, Wait, I'm not in the plane. Uh, the plane, I, what? I'm this just floating like in the Wonder air. This is like Wonder Woman's invisible jet. Yeah. He, even the pilot was shocked at how good the F-35 is at what it was designed and pitched as doing. I didn't That's know crazy. I was stepping into the cockpit of John Cena's personal aircraft <laughs> yeah. today, but here we are. Yeah. Uh, it continues, the jet was left in autopilot mode when the pilot ejected from the aircraft, Jeremy Huggins, a spokesman at Joint Base Charleston, said. Authorities believed there was a possibility that it could have remained airborne for some time, though as of noon Monday, they were certain it was no longer flying. <laughs> I love it. Uh, it's not a direct comparison to it, but like... <laughs> It has to be like that submarine where the Navy knew instantly. They're like, all right, yeah. the submarine's gone. For but for hey, all, we're day, all uh, we're all saying a prayer down here. <laughs> for all day Monday, though, every news outlet in the military was like, I don't know. Could be anywhere. Why don't you help us find it? Could be right above your head. Yeah. Your head. Hey, everyone, go outside and yeah. look up. We need all every, we need all hands on deck to find this missing, amazing, beautiful stealth aircraft. Anyway, amidst the fallout of the disappearing jet, ABC News reported that the Marine Corps acting commandant, Eric Smith, issued a two-day stand-down to take place at some point this week for all aviation units, both inside and outside of the United States. No Marine Corps units are allowed to fly until they have a two-day discussion about <laughs> safety measures and procedures, the commandant said in a service-wide email on Monday. China? This is our chance. <laughs> China, the coast is clear. The stage is set. While they're while they're doing a Chairman a Xi, press the button. While they're doing a, like a mandatory uh, HR uh, study group to figure mm. out why everyone keeps fucking up these planes, I, we are not letting anyone fly these hundred million dollar fighter jets until they've done two days of uh, spreadsheets. I hope they have like little training videos, like those like. OSHA videos, sexual harassment videos. Yeah, yeah. Hi, so you've decided to pilot an F-35 <laughs> jet. Well, there's a couple things you should know. The that button right there, don't touch it. The plane itself, you'll be shocked to know. You can actually see it. Where the stealth comes in is on radar and uh, surface-to-air viewpoints, okay? But don't get scared if you're in the plane. We're going to all learn about this together. And you disassociate because you're sitting in a stealth aircraft. You are, <laughs> you are actually alive. Uh, continues. Their reporting added that the White House spokesman John Kirby said later Sunday on MSNBC that the U.S. still didn't know where the F-35 is, and he said he didn't know more about the reported mishap. We're staying in touch with the Pentagon as much as we can, he said. Right now, we just don't know where that aircraft is. We are glad that the pilot was able to eject safely, and we're making sure he gets the medical care he needs. First thing, we need to literally try to find the aircraft. Then they'll have a chance to talk to the aviator when they get a chance, he said. Cool. Thankfully, or luckily, or whatever, a debris field consistent with the missing fighter jet has been found within a few hours' drive from the military base where the flight originated. And based off the reporting we've seen, it looks like it didn't smash into anyone or anything. Though there, it, it's not confirmed that that happened i don't know yeah, because there it could is have a... been one very very unlucky i don't know hunter yeah out there ah finally a little alone time <laughs> god wanted that man dead yep to smithereens mm -hmm. again we always have to remind you that this show is not live all of this information might have changed or been updated by the time the video is uploaded so we have no idea where the crash site is but here's the update that we saw right before we started filming. And I, I do want to point out that nearly every article, as I said before, about this missing jet, it, it jokes about how they couldn't find it. Where I would have assumed that a missing and deadly jet soaring around the country waiting to crash land somewhere would call for a bit more of a serious tone. I don't know. It seems like they're kind of making light of it because this whole debacle makes everyone involved look really fucking bad. The pilot, the military, the government, everyone. It's not a good look. Anyways, here's NBC News again with the update. 
U.S. fighter jets' stealth abilities appear to be working too well. Oh, good one. As it took authorities hours to locate a debris field after an F-35 went missing when the pilot ejected because of a mishap. The debris was discovered Monday evening about two hours northeast of Joint Base Charleston, an air base in North Charleston, officials said, without providing further details. Just two hours. How many hours is that in jet hours? That's like two minutes. Th yeah, two minutes. It's like <laughs> no time. All right, so um, cool, I guess. Yeah, also, also, I'm assuming that it's two hours driving. They didn't specifically mention that it's two hours driving. They just said two hours north, so... Could have been Canada. Yeah, <laughs> at jet speed. Yeah. So, yeah, cool. As far as we know, no one was hurt, but there's still a hell of a lot of questions that will have to be answered in the coming days and weeks. Also, if you want to get depressed about how our tax dollars work, think about how many people could have been fed, housed, or healed with the $100 million that was just pff, vaporized. Yeah. Not to mention that the entire F-35 program has a price tag well over a trillion dollars by now. One trillion. That's four commas. That's, I uh, <laughs> it's hard to even wrap your head around how big of a number that is, but uh, it makes a billion look small. What would make the person, the average person feel more secure? A bunch of jet aircraft that are primarily used for flying over sporting events as like recruitment marketing? Or a literal trillion dollars worth of funding for social programs and human welfare? Hell, even spending that money on repairing our crumbling infrastructure, some of which is a literal ticking time bomb, that would have been nice too. Yeah. Oh well. Anyways, while this stealth fighter jet was missing, another potentially dangerous scenario was playing out inside the formerly happiest <laughs> place on Earth. Yeah. A bear broke into Disney World, and they had to shut down part of the Magic Kingdom as it roamed around, presumably looking for jars of honey or a job playing the one-string slap bass in the Country Bear Jamboree. Give that bear an instrument. Put him to work. Uh, here's Insider with more on the bear situation. A wild black bear wandered into Walt Disney World earlier Monday, but has since been safely captured, officials with the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission and Disney World said in a statement shared with Insider. More likely than not, the female bear was likely looking for something to eat when she made her way onto the park grounds, the statement said. The Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission, FWC, is aware of a black bear reported in a tree on Walt Disney World property at the Magic Kingdom. Biologists with the FWC's bear management program, as well as FWC law enforcement officers, have safely captured the adult female bear, the statement said. Officials said that usually it's best to give bears space so they can move along on their own. But in this case, the capture and relocation of the wild bear was necessary. They are moving the bear out of the theme park to an area in or around the Ocala National Forest, about 90 miles north of Disney World. And see, that's an accurate display of measurement. 90, 90 miles, no, not two hours away. Oh, yeah. Uh, 90 miles north, that's, I know where that is. Yeah, that's about, I don't know, a couple dozen bear hours. Yeah, but that's a really quick F-35 ride. Yeah. Um, I like to think that that, uh, that F-35, if they had just given it the chance, that it could have gone around the country flying over sports stadiums for days. Yeah. Till all the fuel ran out. Yeah. Yeah. And then one unlucky set of teams just gets burned to death. Yeah. It chose us. Yeah. Anyways, yeah, uh, look, you could choose to believe that this bear just wandered on to Disney World property, yeah. following its nose to the closest churro stand, or you could uh, choose to believe the funnier, more likely option that Ron DeSantis personally released this bear into the park in an act of revenge for Disney suing him and the Florida government and hurting his presidential bid in the process. I choose to believe the other thing. Yeah. That Ron DeSantis let this thing loose. It is very strange that a wild bear would make its way into a massive resort complex to the point where it's endangering guests. Yeah, yeah your explanation it... makes more sense. Ron DeSantis pulled up in yeah. his, uh, his Ford F-350 yeah. and opened up the cage in the back and said, shoo. Come on, get out there. Go get him. Go get him. Don't eat too much sugar. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot of, it's, it's a, uh, Florida not, I grew up there. I, I did never really heard too much bear news, but just in the past couple of months or weeks, we yeah. got a bear in Disney World and a bear uh, randomly swimming on shore in the panhandle. So Bears, they're they got out em. there. They yeah. got them. Animals, 
They're going to go where they're going to go, even if it's the happiest place on Earth. Bear. Very curious, those bears. Wait till they find an orca in uh, It's a Small World. Oh, my God. They're going to rip all the rudders off. You're going to be stuck on that ride for hours. That's right. Yeah. Ain't no help coming for you. Mm -mm. Not in this Florida economy. <laughs> While we're on the topic of bears, though, and also military bases, we do have some more bear news for mm -hmm. you. Just a fun little story to lead into the second half of the show. Nothing too serious. Just bear stuff that happens to combine parts of our previous stories into one perfect tale. Yeah. Over in Alaska, a mama bear and her cubs waited for the driver of a Krispy Kreme donut delivery van to leave his precious cargo behind momentarily. And then, on their tippy toes, they <laughs> ransacked the truck, they packed all those donuts into a picnic basket, and... <laughs> this porridge is just right! And they, uh, yeah, they devoured every delicious donut they could find. They yeah. Had probably the best day of their lives. It probably was. Those, those Krispy Kremes are good. It's sugar, man. Yeah. Here's the Associated Press with the latest. Two bears on an Alaska military base raided a Krispy Kreme donut van that was stopped outside a convenience store during its delivery route. The driver usually left his doors open when he stopped at the store, but this time a sow and one of her cubs that loitered nearby sauntered inside where they stayed for approximately 20 minutes Tuesday morning, said Shelly Dino, the store manager for joint base Elmendorf Richardson JMM Express. The bears chomped on donut holes and other pastries, ignoring the banging on the side of the van that was aimed at shooing them away. I was beating on the van, they're not moving. I could hear them breaking open the packages and everything, she said. I was like, they don't even care. <laughs> When, These bears have no decency. This Dino lady, she's not afraid of no bear. Well, it is Alaska. It's a little bit different than Florida, but I assume. Are these black bears or are these fucking Kodiak Alaskan hey, bears? Hey, bear, get out of that van. It's not... I don't know what to do. The bear is not listening to me. It's continuing to eat the donuts yeah. as if I'm not even here. If they're black bears, it's like, yeah, you can scare them away with loud noises. If they're actual, like, Alaskan brown bears... They can fucking tear you in half. I would just they call would it rip, a loss. They rip the van in half L trying listen, to get out. your donuts, forget the donuts, lady. Yeah, especially once a bear gets some sugar in them. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. Sugar bear. Yeah. Uh, when the bears couldn't be roused, base security was called and sounded sirens meant to scare away the bears, she said. The bears eventually came out and wandered in front of the convenience store and gas station a bit before heading into the woods. Good. Where they belong. Their work there was done. Luckily, none of the bears in either of these stories were killed. Yeah. So good. that's good. Yeah. Good. But and I I I want to chalk it up to the fact that uh over the past couple of months we have been conditioned to not uh take the first strike against these animals. Yeah, you don't you don't want to start something you can't finish. That's right. Even on a military base, they're just like, "Shoot, get out of here." I mean, you you put the military base in Alaska, what do you think was going to happen? Mhm. Mm Anyways, it's time to take a quick second to thank today's sponsor and uh look, if you're ever in a situation where a bear or some abandoned military aircraft is heading right for you. You want to be hydrated. Glug, glug. Drink yeah. up. Uh, hopefully that's a good lead-in, because today's sponsor is Liquid IV. And it is one of our favorite sponsors because they have kept us hydrated, healthy, and happy for quite some time. Hydration isn't only for people training for championships and marathons. It's also about daily maintenance, whether it's for short runs, hikes, daily activities, gardening, whatever. Proper functional hydration is essential, and Liquid IV is the number one powered hydration brand in America. You can use it first thing in the morning, before a workout, when you feel run down in the afternoon, after a night out with friends, or on long flights. With just one stick, you can hydrate two times faster than water alone. Plus, get essential vitamins and three times the electrolytes as leading sports drinks. Liquid IV comes in 12 delicious, refreshing flavors to keep your hydration routine exciting. I like the grape flavor. I'm big fan of the peach. Uh, all of them are great, though. I had some literally today before I went on a uh, trail run, yeah. a hike. A faster hike than usual. Yeah, you you want to you want those electrolytes and those vitamins. I had so many electrolytes pumped through my system. So here's the details. One stick of liquid IV in 16 ounces of water hydrates you two times faster and more efficiently than water alone. It contains five essential vitamins, B3, B5, B6, B12, and vitamin C. It has three times the electrolytes of leading sports drinks. It's made with high-quality ingredients. It's non-GMO and free from gluten, dairy, and soy. Real people, real flavor, real hydrating. Grab your Liquid IV in bulk nationwide at Costco, or you can get 20% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use code TODAYDAILY at checkout. That's 20% off anything when you shop Better Hydration today using promo code TODAYDAILY at liquidiv.com. 
All right, back into the news now, and let's just check in on how uh, conservatives in middle America are doing, and... Oh, Jesus Christ, yeah, that's... that's are we the great. baddies? <laughs> yeah, it's actually pretty fucking alarming, Jeez. if you ask me. Uh, maybe it's the slow boil of culture war bullshit over the past decade or so, but Republican politicians trying to score points with constituents by burning a pile of boxes meant to represent books and leftist policies with multiple flamethrowers, it does seem over the top even by dystopian fiction standards. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, so it seems just, a bit too ham-fisted. It's just especially hilarious that, uh, yeah, a flamethrower that can shoot uh, hot flames like 20 feet away, legal. You Books. Know, use your judgment. It's, you know, we, we individual liberty, you can have a flamethrower. That book has a titty in it. Yeah. And oh, it needs to burn. It's got to go. Yeah. That is a crime. You've committed a crime. So while it is slightly funny that they didn't burn any actual books, just the idea of books, <laughs> It's still a pretty crazy site. I mean, they're literally doing a Fahrenheit 451. Uh, and chances are pretty high that they might actually be burning at least one copy of Fahrenheit 451 in a future pile of actual books because irony is dead. Here's the details about this legitimately shocking act from local outlet, the Kansas City Star. A Republican candidate for Missouri governor on Monday vowed to burn books if elected after he was criticized for a video showing him burning cardboard boxes with a flamethrower. The box say books on the side? <laughs> no, but the, it, it was clearly that was what they were trying to represent. And then uh, after this had gone viral and everyone's like, wow, this is unhinged behavior. Right. This is psychotic. They were like, <laughs> checkmate lives that's that's what they did like okay then why would you burn a bunch of empty boxes they're like that yeah but the, mm -hmm. that the books are next but that was what they basically did they were like uh you see this is more just the media and the liberals coming up with all these fake news ideas about how we were burning books when we were clearly just burning the idea of yeah. leftist hypothetically policies and books yeah the video, which has gone viral on social media, shows State Senator Bill Eigel, a Weldon Spring Republican who is running for governor in 2024, and State Senator Nick Schroer, a St. Charles Republican, using flamethrowers to torch a stack of boxes at a fundraising event in Defiance in St. Charles County on Friday. In the video, I am taking a flamethrower to cardboard boxes representing what I'm going to do to the leftist policies and rhino corruption of the Jeff City Swamp. Eigel said in a statement to the Star on Monday. But let's be clear, you bring those woke, pornographic books to Missouri schools to try to brainwash our kids, and I'll burn those too, on the front lawn of the governor's mansion. Eigel's remarkable comment promising to burn books comes as he embarks on a campaign for governor attempting to appeal to the lowest common denominator, I mean, sorry, <laughs> appeal to the staunch right wing of the Missouri Republican Party. Again, this is one of those things where I'm like, like the abortion stuff. Where you're just like any, no, even if they're Republican conservative, a normal person yeah. would look at this and go, huh, that seems like the I, wrong direction. Yeah, I don't know if I want to associate with that. Yeah. Yeah, this is, a, I mean, we'll see if the trend sticks, but the last two elections have definitely... Uh, not work validated out. the yeah. uh the felix biederman theory of normal whites yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah. It's, so far it's been very accurate and i think it's going to stay that way abortion was obviously the big one where yeah. like a bunch of people who are like on paper i guess like anti-abortion once they see like the actual what results that, of what that's like that? in yeah. practice they're like oh fuck shit well yeah hmm. yeah and now uh the idea of banning books now has a visual representation uh -huh. of what they're doing it's nuts it's crazy where we're at right now yeah yeah well but okay maybe there's a a better explanation in here somewhere oh here we go schroer reached by phone on monday said the video was taken during an event called freedom fest hosted by the saint charles county republican central committee he and Igel were burning empty boxes to help the committee raffle off a flamethrower he said See, it was just a harmless contest to raffle off a fully functioning flamethrower to someone attending the Freedom Festival. Yeah, okay. Probably, though, I would say best to keep an eye on the literal book-burning politicians, but uh, I don't know. As long as they're just giving out flamethrowers yeah, and not sure. books. What's, what's the worst that could happen? Yeah, then totally fine. Yeah. 
we must have overreacted. That's freedom for you. But uh, speaking of keeping an eye on people, that's right, folks. Line up for the slop because mm. we got your daily Elon Musk and Lauren Boebert updates coming right up. And let's get Elon out of the way first, because by the time we even start writing the next episode of Tech News Day, the latest news will already be updated, changed, altered, reversed, etc. But it looks like Mr. Musk is getting somewhat serious about putting all of Twitter behind a paywall. A move that will absolutely, finally, kill off the platform once and for I all. I think he should fucking do it. Yeah. Mr. Musk, if you're listening, press I've the button. I've never been more excited for one of his idiotic ideas to actually be implemented because this would be... It would, it would destroy the website, but it would also prove once and for all what a fucking ding-dong this guy is. Yeah. Uh, in another surreal bit of reality, he said this while he was in Israel defending his platform for being an anti-Semitic He went all the way to Israel for that. Mm. He, he was also hanging out with uh, Reset Erdogan the other day for some reason. He's doing the tour. It was real awkward. And Erdogan, Erdogan big dicked him. He's like, where is the child's mother? Because Elon was with his... Yeah, mother. yeah. And Elon's like, oh, well, she's... Fucking San Francisco. We're actually separated. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not married. The price of the of the spaceship just went up another ten million dollars, Mr. Musk. I'm like, why is he? Mean, does Turkey have a space program? I don't know what's going on. Yeah. Hmm. Anyway, here's CNBC. Elon Musk discussed his plans for Twitter, now called X, on Monday during a live-streamed conversation with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, I guess. Among other things, Musk said the social network is moving to having a small monthly payment for use of the X system in order to combat vast armies of bots. Musk did not say how much of a new plan would cost users of the social network or what other features would or would not be included with payment at the lowest tier. During the live stream, Musk also divulged some new metrics from X, saying it now has 550 million monthly users who generate 100 million to 200 million posts per day. Musk did not disclose how many of the company's monthly users are authentic versus bots. He also did not make an apples-to-apples -apples comparison with metrics previously used by Twitter. The discussion with Netanyahu was meant to focus on theoretical risks of artificial intelligence technology and how AI should potentially be regulated. However, Musk also used it to dispute the perception that his social network tolerates hate speech and anti-Semitism. He was going off against George Soros, like, the day before. It's in the reporting, too. <laughs> Just like, uh, yeah, it's... Your words and actions are... I'm not anti-Semitic. I just say have the exact same talking points of like your average anti-Semite. Just so we're clear, Mr. Yeah. Mr. Netanyahu. Uh, the CNBC article continues. The meeting followed widespread criticism of Musk by civil rights groups over his amplification of bigotry on his social network, including anti-Semitic accounts, content, and conspiracies. In recent weeks, Musk has threatened to sue the Anti-Defamation League, a Jewish-led organization, alleging that they tried to kill his social network. Musk has blamed the ADL, rather than his own business decisions, for a 60% drop in revenue at X and said he had no choice but to file a defamation lawsuit against the group. Before meeting with Netanyahu, Musk also accused George Soros' foundation of wanting to, quote, destroy Western civilization. The Hungarian-American Jewish philanthropist is the founder of Open Society Foundations, which donates to a variety of civil society groups, and he is the subject of several anti-Semitic conspiracy theories. Yeah, the use of the phrase Western civilization... And destroy is, Western civilization? But, like, yeah. referring to Western civilization in this way is, like, that's a, that's a dead giveaway. Yes. The only people talking about Western civilization being under attack are Nazis or people who haven't realized that they are Nazis yet. Mm-hmm. And there's also, of course, uh, this was getting headlines all over the weekend. Uh, it's a bit of an old story, but we might get into it on Tech News Day. But yeah, there's a story floating around that claims that Elon Musk was nearly killed by Tesla's autopilot feature. And that uh, after it happened, he barged into the offices and demanded that his engineers fix the problem. Uh, yeah. And what ended up happening, it was I guess it was part of the 405 when it goes through the Sepulveda Pass. Mm. Um and it was because there was an, a section there where the lane markers were, like, not visible. Or temporarily painted. So or they, yeah. they fixed the problem by literally going to, like, Caltrans and being like, please, can you mark that lane better? Yeah, but how are you going to police that across the entire nation? It's not possible. No. 
when your car runs entirely on cameras and doesn't use radar or lidar, mm -hmm. like it, it's insane. Like my car has lane technology in it, and it's like, yeah, if I'm driving directly into the sun, it like tells me it's like, sorry, buddy, can't do it. You got to take the wheel. Yeah. I am blinded by the sun. <laughs> Uh, but somehow Elon thinks that uh, cameras that can also be blinded by direct sunlight uh, yeah. will they eventually just figure the figure out how to get around it. And that's why he dug a hole uh, it, so he could get to work faster. Yeah, no sunlight down there. Exactly. So incredible stuff. I mean, watching Elon succumb to hubris on a daily basis, it's been entertaining, but let's not forget that everything he messes with has real-world consequences. So uh, it is funny that he's like, talking to Netanyahu about how he's totally not anti-Semitic while doing a bunch of anti-Semitic shit. But also, he's helping uh, that to flourish. And that is a very, very bad thing. And should be taken a lot more seriously by a lot more people. He's a bad man. Mm -hmm. But let's move on to a bad woman. <laughs> bad for different reasons. Bad. She's bad. Yeah. Lauren Boebert. She's really done quite the press tour over the past couple of days, avoiding the more um, titillating parts of the Beetlejuice story. You know the one. Yeah. And coming up with excuses for her actions that somehow attempt to place blame on the opposing political party. Yeah. Conservative commentators have also joined in, claiming that what she did was actually totally fine and that somehow the libs are just, they're just prudes. Yeah. So we're going to be clear Jerking off your boyfriend in an all-ages performance of a Beetlejuice musical is not acceptable behavior. But it's also, you know, made for easy ridicule and mockery because of the simple fact that Lauren Boebert's politics are completely antithetical to her actions in the theater. Yeah. Or at least on paper they are. I'd yeah. say her politics are trashy, and she is a trashy yeah. person, and this was yeah. an example of her being sure. a trashy person. Yes. But anyway, here's the latest and all that. First off, she's saying that the whole over the pants hand job thing was just, you know, just her being a little goofy, being a little eccentric. Yeah. Here's the the hill. Representative Lauren Boebert pushed back on media accounts of her being kicked out of a Denver theater production of Beetlejuice last week over bad behavior, saying that some accounts were exaggerated and untrue. I was a little too eccentric. I'm very known for having an animated personality, maybe overtly animated personality. I was laughing, I was singing, Having a fantastic time, Bobert said in an OAN interview Sunday. Was told to kind of settle it down a little bit, which I did. But then my next flip up was taking a picture. She's literally doing the conservative version of like, sorry, I'm neurodivergent. <laughs> I'm just special. And uh, I I have, uh, what is it? The, the when you can feel the music? Uh, synesthesia? Yeah. I got a little case of the synesthesia and I it just, I get the spirits. And next thing you know, I'm dancing, I'm singing, I'm jerking off my boy. I mean, I didn't say that. I'm not jerking off my boyfriend. He's not groping my titties. Uh, she never mentioned any of that. She's just like, she keeps pointing to the fact that like, yeah, I, I sang and did a little dancing. And did a little vaping. Now, I'm curious. I don't know if this has been brought up. Was the vape nicotine or was it weed? Because this is Colorado. Yeah, I don't know. And she only puffs on it like once. She takes like a big drag and she's done, which like, I guess it could be one or the other, but... I haven't seen anyone comment on what was in the vape. We don't know, and we'll never know, because no, it's not like anyone took the vape and analyzed it. I mean, you'd be able to smell it, I guess. Yeah, probably, but uh, it could have been like uh, mixed with some fruity flavor or something like that. That's true. She does seem like the type of person who uh, doesn't take it straight. Just uh, give me some pina colada flavored cannabis. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, that would just be more stuff that uh, she is politically opposed to, but uh, totally down with doing in her own personal life. Uh, there's also a weird conspiracy forming around the, the man in the footage, the recipient of the over-the-pants handjob, mm -hmm. with conservative weirdos claiming that this whole thing was actually a setup to embarrass Miss Bobert. And she fed right into that a little bit during an impromptu interview with TMZ where she said that uh, going forward, she's going to have to check the party affiliation of future dates. Yeah. And that she's essentially broken up with the handjob guy, which that makes it even more wild. Like, I was like, oh, uh, they must... Uh, clearly, they've been dating for a while. If they that. are in love. Yeah, no, th I guess this was a first date. Wow. Damn, she's a fast woman. Yeah. She is bouncing. She's on the rebound hard. Yeah, and we... Uh, we uh, I think we maybe, maybe talked about it on Weekly Weird News, but the, it was just uh, ironic that her boyfriend apparently owns a bar 
yeah. and had like drag shows and stuff at it. It's just like these people don't believe anything. No. In their politics at all. No, they don't. No. Their entire goal is to enrich their families and friends and uh, make other people worse off in the process. Yeah. And yes. feel a sense of superiority over That's those. right. Yes. Uh, before we go, a quick update on the WGA and actor strike. Uh, all of those daytime talk show hosts uh, that broke the picket line and decided to go back into production without writers, they have finally, after a solid week of bullying and having their reputations destroyed, in some cases, whatever reputation they had left, yeah. Bill Maher. Yeah, walking a thin line there, Bill Maher. Yeah, they have gone back on their decision to restart their shows and will not be moving forward while the strike is happening, which is good. Drew Barrymore, you made a mistake. We got our eyes on you. But Bill Maher, uh, this has been a long time coming. This is exactly I who he is. I fucking hate Bill Maher. Yeah, and it's like... It makes him look like even more of a tool bag. I think this is like every generation gets their Bill Maher looking like a piece of shit moment. And mm -hmm. this is like Gen Z's moment to be like, oh, that guy's full of shit and a total asshole. I mean, the original Bill Maher moment that got him canceled was actually one of the only cool things he's ever said. What was that? It was like right after 9-11 and he's like, he's like, they keep calling these hijackers cowardly. I don't think flying a, a plane directly t into a building w into certain death is cowardly. Yeah. It's uh, it's a lot of things, but it's not that. And he got, he lost his fucking show over that. And it's like, I, no lies detected. Yeah. Was it uh, Gilbert Godfrey also lost some stuff because he made a joke about it like right after? Oh yeah, he lost like Geico. Yeah, the couldn't Gecko. do the, or Affleck. Or Affleck, that's yeah. right. But yeah, Bill Maher fucking sucks. Yeah. And uh, just, yeah, his whole vibe with this was just like, I don't need writers. And I'm I'm almost certain that he very much needs uh, It turns writers. out he did, he did need yeah, writers. Because he's not a funny person. No. Uh, here's Axios with more on that. Facing mounting criticism, Bill Maher, Drew Barrymore, and Jennifer Hudson have all reversed their recent decisions to resume their live TV talk shows amid the ongoing writer's strike. Drew Barrymore on Sunday posted on Instagram that she made the decision to pause the show's premiere until the strike is over acknowledging the backlash she had faced. I have no words to express my deepest apologies to anyone I have hurt and, of course, to our incredible team who works on the show and has made it what it is today. We really tried to find our way forward, she wrote. It continues, CBS's daytime talk show, The Talk, also pushed back its scheduled Monday return following Barrymore's decision, Variety reported. The Jennifer Hudson show did the same per Variety. Bill Maher on Monday also said that production for his late night show, Real Time with Bill Maher, would also remain on pause. It came as a reversal from his announcement Thursday that his show would be returning, in part because much of the show's staff is struggling mightily. But on Monday, he posted on X that his decision to return to work was made when it seemed nothing was happening and there was no end in sight to this strike. Now that both sides have agreed to go back to the negotiating table, He's going to delay the return of the show and hope that they can finally get this done. Uh -huh. Okay, buddy, yeah. sure. Now, uh, we all know that it's because you tried to do the show without writers and completely fucking failed because you're a weirdo hack and everyone spent the entire weekend reposting clips of you getting owned by countless guests on your shows over the years. On your own show. Yeah, just one, clip after clip after clip. One with clip. Uh, Roddy Piper, just yeah. like absolutely just like owning the stage. Bill Maher trying to say wrestling's fake and Roddy Piper not only being like, here's every bone in my body I broke, but just like, here's how good I am at being a fucking, like, entertainer. He's like, I have I have just taken control of your audience and your show. Yeah. And you can't do anything about it. Yeah. I am, sh I am silencing the host of this show. There is no razzle-dazzle that could possibly compete with a professional wrestler on your stage. Yeah. R.I.P. Yeah. He was, uh... There was legend. also uh, the, the Henry. There was a clip of Henry Rollins. Yeah, Henry Rollins just up. being like, uh, actually, I no, think, I don't agree with you actually, at all. <laughs> actually, I think it's bad that uh, a woman like got... uh, was a predator on a child. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Bill, weirdo. Yeah, he's had like some of the most insane takes over the years, and he's just he's just not funny. And and uh, yeah, he's like he's like the original edge lord. Like, there's that whole time, like not even that long ago, where he like just like threw out the n word in like the middle of a, a I can joke. do it. Yeah. It, it, like it wasn't even it was just so random just like I'm gonna I'm gonna say the n-word and just like everyone's like wait what the fuck did he just do it's wild it's uh he's a very strange person but yeah bullying works and uh the, yeah. all the networks are getting even more desperate I saw a show I'm I'm pretty sure it's real unless unless this was a great troll but it's a show called celebrity uh, celebrity name that tune. I saw a poster for that on Twitter, and it's like literally hosted. Uh, one of the hosts is um, 
the woman who played Jenna Maroney on 30 Rock. So people are like, <laughs> this literally looks like a one, of the, Rock one of the yeah. fake shows on 30 Rock. But that's all. They've got celebrity name that tune, and none of the celebrities are going to be real celebrities no. because all the real celebrities are on strike. Yes. So very exciting stuff. Uh, also, uh, the, the fall slate is shaping up to be... Uh, quite something. We've got uh, the Golden Bachelor, which is the old person's bachelor. Oof. It's like everyone's in their 70s. Uh, and then, uh, gosh, there was something else that was being promoted all week. There's one like called football. like Man Games. It's just like... Uh, like bar games, but film? It's like fucking competitive uh, cornhole and shit <laughs> like that. Like, yeah, the, We it's... are desperate. <laughs> Please. Yeah. Uh, anyways, the negotiations uh, are apparently moving a little bit uh, compared to the past couple of months. There was some talk yeah. in August, so hopefully the studios have realized that they have nothing and they can't do anything without their writers and actors. I so, hope so. Yeah. Uh, we'll see how that goes, but uh, great to see the bullying still works. In the meantime, we're going to do some bullying of our own. Hey, loser. Hey, dork. Hit that like button. Come Why aren't on. you hitting the like button, you loser? It'd be a lot cooler if you hit that like button. Mm -hmm. Anyways, uh, yeah, <laughs> really, it, it does help us out. We're not trying to bully you, but hitting the like button does help out the show. Also, being uh, subscribed to the channel. Just subscribe to the channel, yeah, and that's all you need on. to do. Come on. Uh, if you're feeling frisky, hit the join button, but you don't have This to. is the only entertainment option you have right now. Yeah, so. yeah. Uh, and in the meantime, if you're not entertained enough, we have uh, two other videos over here for you. We got a new episode of Weekly Weird News about tiny little alien guys who we can stomp on at will. Boop! Maybe one of them stole the plane. Oh. How's he going to reach the pedals, though? <laughs> the pedals. <laughs> uh, he has those blocks on his feet. Uh, yeah. Uh, and then we have an episode of News Dump. Check both of those out, and we'll be back with some tech news. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.